Yes, well, thank you very much for providing this course, Owen. Um, it has been a real eye-opener to me. I benefited a lot from your course today. When you're consulting a patient who has um, chest pain, very important to ask whether they're having chest pain now. Are you preparing for the RCA? Hi, my name is Dr. Erwin Kwan. I have doctors lead a happy and fulfilled life. Today we've got the RCA course. The course is going to start soon. So we're going to talk a little bit about understanding the RCA. We're going to talk about what's the purpose of the RCA, what examiners are looking for. Um, we're going to cover the challenges of the RCA. We're going to look at calibrating your case, making sure that you have a case that's in the sweet spot that's not too challenging but at the same time that's not low challenge. Participants will also get a chance to do a simulated role play and we're going to identify the weaknesses and address this. It's important to have a simple approach to the RCA and in this course we're going to look at how candidates can execute this RCA blueprint and use a simple approach to get better cases and optimize the submission. So the course is going to start soon. I'll see you shortly. Ultimately, examiners are looking for somebody who can work and practice as a safe and independent GP. So you need to be able to give cases that will demonstrate your capabilities as a safe and independent GP. There is a lot of challenges with the RCA. First of all, Getting the right cases is, is half of the battle. So if, if you can't get the right case, then it's very difficult to be able to show these skills and capabilities. That's why it's important to, to actually discuss your practice and get them on board to help support you to get the right cases. So that's why it's important to negotiate with your supervisor how you're going to book your clinic. If, if you can't actually have any control on your clinic and the patients that you're seeing, then it's difficult to get the right case. The second thing is having um, this consultation that's sufficiently complex and being able to complete it within 10 minutes. That's another challenge with real life consultation because you can't have any control about how much the patient um, is going to talk about and how long this will take but you have control over the way the consultation is going to some extent. So you can navigate the consultation and, and look at how you can manage your uh, consultation in terms of how much time you're spending in each part. Because there, there's a lot of candidates who dwell on data gathering and um, at the expense of clinical management. We're going to talk about that in a bit. The third thing is talkative patient who want to tell you every detail of the history. I'm sure you are familiar with patients who, who come in and want to get you up to date with the history. So this, this is quite challenging as well. So you need to be able to have techniques how you can address that. For example, you can let the patient know when they first come in to let them know I've had a look at your notes and I've read your history. So they don't need to actually update you with every detail of their history. So what are the pitfalls to avoid? I know some of you have submitted previously and have unfortunately not passed. The biggest pitfall is submitting low challenge cases. And when we talk about low challenge cases, these are cases that could be dealt with by a pharmacist or an advanced nurse practitioner. If a case of for example, verruca or blepharitis is being sent to you. Um, this could easily be dealt by an allied care professional. So don't submit these cases because you're doing yourself a disservice. And remember, you get 18 marks for each case. So by submitting a low challenge case, you're already capping how much mark you're going to get. So make sure that you're submitting cases that will show your capabilities as a safe and independent GP. The other thing is candidates tend to overcomplicate simple issues. Some cases, for example, if you have a case of acne that you can complete within seven minutes, then you try to drag the consultation for eight or nine minutes just to overcomplicate it so that you're trying to get more marks. And this is something examiners can see. And when they see this, it's quite painful to watch or listen back. And, and you, you won't be um, scored high for these kind of cases. So 
try to avoid overcomplicate any simple issues. The third point is to be able to know what the patient needs and what the patient wants. Too often I see candidates of being over patient centered. So if a patient is demanding and asking for something that they want but don't need, then you have a dilemma and you need to address that dilemma. Explain to the patient what you think is appropriate and what you think is something you can't do and provide an alternative to the patient. So you need to be patient centered but not over patient centered to the point of being patient driven and patient driven might not be a very good consultation uh, practice because you're actually going to give in in what the patient tells you and it might not be in line with recommendations. A big pitfall is poor use of time and when you're not managing your time effectively it's going to affect the whole consultation. You're going to have a problem with clinical management and this often leads to incomplete or rushed clinical management. It's very important that you have a consultation that falls in the green zone. If your consultation is in the red or the yellow zone, then it's very difficult for you to actually score high. These are the factors that you need to consider. Whether it's a high challenge case, whether it's a moderate challenge case or low challenge case. So the sweet spot is to submit a moderate clinical challenge with some complicating factors. And these complicating factors could include patient's expectation, patient has a demand that's not realistic, and you address this demand, or if the patient has anxiety and don't want to go to hospital, you address this anxiety, and um, you'll be able to score more to this. There's an angle to the consultation. Other things such as psychological issues, social situation, or if the patient has a hidden agenda, this will make a good consultation. So make sure that you have some complicating factors if your um, case is of moderate to low challenge. But if your case is too high challenge, then it's going to be a struggle for you to complete it within 10 minutes. So these cases might not be suitable for the RCA. So uh, we've talked about time management. I'd like to ask you, how, how much time are you spending on clinical management? Think about clinical management um, because this is where we can see a lot of candidates who are actually not doing well spend more time in data gathering. They spend over six to seven minutes, usually go past eight minutes, and then they realize that they have to do a bit of clinical management and rush through it. So um, ideally, you want to make sure you give yourself enough time for clinical management because if you spend not enough time in clinical management, you won't be able to go through your safety net, you won't be able to discuss any follow-up plan if appropriate. And if you're spending too much time on data gathering, um, you're getting a very good history, but at the expense of not scoring enough for clinical management. So ideally, by six minutes, you want to switch the conversation to um, discuss clinical management. and a good phrase that um, I've learned from the examiner is to, to discuss with the patient and address their ideas, concerns and expectation. So a phrase that you could use is, I know that you think you may have gold stone so, or something else, but I think that it's a kidney stone because the pain is in your loan. What do you know about kidney stone? By saying this phrase, what you're doing is you're bridging your data gathering with your clinical management. So this is a turning point. When, when you're doing this, you're showing the examiner you've listened to the patient, you've said the patient that what the ideas has been, and you're addressing that, and you're also verbalizing what your working diagnosis is, and you're also checking the patient's pre-existing knowledge about what the problem is, and you're going to explain it. Before you, you explain it, you're asking the patient what they know about this. So this shows that you're listening, that you're addressing patient's ideas, concern, and, and you're going to explain the patient. So you're also involving the patient for a shared understanding. 
So you need to commit to a working diagnosis because if you don't commit to a working diagnosis and you don't verbalize it, examiners have no idea what you're thinking and they can't mark you. So if we look at the clear pass criteria, what I'd like to highlight your attention onto is justifiable clinical approach. So for clear pass, you need to justify your clinical approach. That's why you need to verbalize your thoughts. If you're going to examine a patient, you need to tell them why you need to examine them. It's no good just saying, I need to examine you to have a feel of your tummy. You need to say, what's the reason you're going to have a feel of the tummy? You want to make sure there's no signs of any lumps or any problem, so you need to verbalize it. And you need to share your ideas and empower the patient, so be supportive to the patient. So for PASS, you have an adequate level of competence with a clinical approach that may not be fluent, but you're still justifying what your approach is and your technical corruption. Looking at this case, how will the examiner know whether you are able to manage a patient's expectation? I think there's no hard and fast rule how you can do ICE. As long as it's natural, if you think it's um, natural to do it at the beginning, go for it. If you think that's something you'd rather do after you've taken the medical history, you can do that as well. There's no right or wrong into when to do ICE because each patient is different and it will depend on um, how the situation is like. If, if you have a red, very rigid structure when you're doing ICE every time in the beginning, then your consultation will be very rigid and sometimes it might be very awkward for the patient. So it needs to be um, done without any formulaic intent. So do it when it feels right. Don't force it. So it needs to be in context. First thing is, um, when you're consulting a patient who has um, chest pain, it's very important to ask whether they're having chest pain now. The fact that you realize that later, it just um, makes things more difficult with your management. Thank you very much for providing this course, Owen. Um, it has been a real eye-opener to me. Be that much more aware of um, not just suffering, but at what point I've got to really be fair with myself and move on. I think it's a real comfort zone to stay in the nature gathering, and it, but it's a false comfort to do that. So it has been really helpful for me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for organizing this course. Uh, I think I benefited a lot from your course today. Um, to be honest, I have multiple things to address. Uh, for example, the time management. Um, you can see it clearly from my first case, I was really running late. And second case was not uh, good either. Uh, I think the time management and focus history, I was just asking questions, I mean, in the end as well. So I was going um, forward and backwards. I think I need to address. And the most important thing I learned from this course today was uh, a working diagnosis. Uh, there are some pivotal phrases, how you can uh, do a very clear, concise, I mean, management. I think I'm going to address all of these uh, issues uh, before I sit for um, RC exam in May. So I, I think I, will, I won't let you down, <laughs> I'll, I'll do my best. As we talk about um, with the cycle, with, the more you iterate your cycle, the better your consultation will get. So now you know about the areas that you need to address and you know how you can address them, I'm sure your consultation would be better. If you have any other questions, please um, get in touch with me. And, if you've not already joined the Facebook group, we have a Facebook group, um, the MRCGP RTS support group. Ask your question in the group and the community will help you. Do you want to take things to the next level and give yourself every chance to pass the RCA? I'm offering a limited one-to-one -one coaching service where I guide you every step of the way. If you don't want to risk failing the RCA, book for the RCA Blueprint coaching session today where we can discuss how you can implement strategies, tactics, and tools, and receive personal feedback to help you pass the RCA. If you want to join the limited coaching program, click the link down in the description below. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please let me know down in the comment section. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.